Hey everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun box card using my tower fold dies. Now I will also share tutorials on how to make this fold without the dies, but for those of you that have them, this is another really fun and creative way to make some really special cards. So as you can see, I've got an underwater theme here, and by pulling the sides in and out like I'm doing so, it gives the illusion of those creatures moving. And they're just stuck there with a little bit of acetate. In the back, you've got the crab with the holographic shell and then on the front here you've got the treasure chest which looks really really good and then the whole thing will fold flat like so and fit into a five by seven envelope or you can use one of my box envelopes and I'll link that along the way and then on the back you have lots of room to be able to stamp and write your message as well but I think it looks great when it's opened up it's just got such a nice look and it's a really special card so let me show you how to make it Okay, so this is the die set that I'm using. So it's the 5x7 from the terrific, terrific Tower die set. But you can also use the 6x6, and i done a Craft World exclusive video using the 6x6 with a similar style. So I'll link that one up here, and it will also be linked in the description box. So, you know, you might have the 6x6 size, and also I have the landscape. So this is 5x7, but you have this panel here, so it would be a good one to cut an aperture out of that one you can see the landscape panels as opposed to the five by seven where you've got the portrait panels but like i said i'm using this one today because i wanted to have you know this tall kind of area where all the fish would be swimming so i've already gone ahead and cut everything and like i said at the beginning you can make this without using the dies i have the tutorials i have the tower fold playlist so have a look there but i have used the die here so this is it it's really, really easy to use and it's just nice and quick. So what you want to do is die cut two bases. So I've done one here in the white, so it's just simple. Pass it through your machine and you will have this one cut. Then you want to cut another one, but this time you want to cut the middle out at the same time. So you can see there, that sits perfectly over the top. Then you've also got a mat and layer in the set. You want to use the smaller matte layer. So if you're making this yourself you'll just need to find something that you've got that will fit within this space but you can see there that fits perfectly. So when I was laying this one down I just used some of my washi tape. Make sure that you've got an even border at the top and the bottom and also the left and the right so that when you you know it's all cut through so you can cut it all at the same time you can see there we've got this even top and bottom and we're going to reinforce that slightly when we add the acetate behind. So then I've cut my mats and layers so I'll just explain these ones. So this one here is the largest mat so it's this one here and that's going to go on the inside which is going to be on this one here and it's just going to stick in the centre there. Okay once I start putting this all together it's going to make sense but you want one for the inside. These ones I've done four so I've got two for the outer sides and also on the back side just so it looked nice. Now you, you get your mat and layer for the side pieces so you can see there's the mat and then the layer is slightly smaller. I've just used the largest, I've just used the mat layer. So whether you're using the 5x7, the 6x6 or the seven, or the 5x7 landscape they will all have those mats and layers so you can decide. But I've done four of them and then I've cut this panel using the same paper and this one here will cover all of these panels. So if you want to cover every one, then you'll need to run that through four times and it will give you 28 pieces, okay? I've also then cut a mat and a layer using those two here for the back. So that's where I'm gonna stamp and write my message. And then I've cut a piece of acetate, which is going to fit behind your aperture. So whatever size you're doing, you want to cut your acetate so it's going to cover. Now I've already put red tape, very thin layer of red tape, but you can see now that's going to cover to look like the fish tank, uh, the fish bowl, you know, whatever you want to do here. So before I stick all those pieces down, let me show you how to pop this out. So I'm going to do it on the plain one here. It will be the same on this one, but for those of you that maybe haven't seen this card style, what you'll have is when it die cuts, you'll have score lines along every other. So there's no score line here, but there's a score line here. Then it misses one and there's another one, misses one, there's another one, okay? So with every one where there's a score line here facing you, you want to lift that one up towards you. Then miss one and bring that one up. You can see I'm kind of putting my finger there, I'm using my finger underneath to pop it up. Now as you pop those ones up, it will all come into play. These ones behind here are gonna go down. So you can see, although it hasn't got a score line here, it has one here, but then this one doesn't have a score line there because this is gonna be your piece that will 
be seen from the front so you don't want there to be a score line there so it just looks neater basically so that one can then go down again go down and as you work your way along it will start to come into this shape here now there's also score lines through the middle here you just want to start working in those score lines as well so I said I like to just feed my finger through and it kind of you know these ones come this way and those ones go underneath like so and then I just kind of bring it down and fold it towards me and it will start to find those score lines here and just go along and just pinch those ones because you can get right in there now and then just bring that over and then I can just burnish all of these sides here and then I flip it over and just do the ones in there as well. I am using a thick cardstock. This is 300 GSM, but it still works. And then you just want to repeat the same on this side. So again, I've got the score line facing me there. So I'm bringing that one up and down, up, down, up, down. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I mean, you do want to kind of follow the score lines because we put them there so that then you don't get the score lines here. However, if you did do it the other way, it's not the end of the world, but do make sure that they're the same on each side. So again, I'm just gonna pop my fingers in, push that down, just find the score lines there. Okay, so now you have your tower fold, and that is what this die creates, it's this shape here. You then, have these edge dies that will coordinate. So this one here coordinates with the 5x7 landscape, but you could use it on this 5x7 if you wanted. For this one, you have the balloons, the stars, and the flowers. So basically this border then can attach onto the sides, and I've got all of that on my release video, which I'll link up here if you wanted to see that in more detail. And then that's the one for the 6x6, and it's got this beautiful bow, it's really popular, and you've got the butterflies there and the hearts, it's just a really pretty set. So you do have coordinating edges if you wanted to, but for today's one, I'm gonna use it without the edges, and I'm just gonna use the mats and the layers. So now I'm just gonna do the same as what I've just done there on this one. Okay, so I just started to do it on this one, but I think because this is obviously at the moment is quite weak, I think it's going to be better to attach this piece first and then do the folding. So I'm going to remove the backing. Okay, and then very carefully just sit that down. So I'm going to bring it right up to the top there. So now that's just made that very strong again. So I would advise if you've cut a large aperture out of it like I have, then it add that and then do the folds. Okay, so I've put those both together. So what will happen when we do go to stick them together is you're gonna stick one over the top, make sure again they match up like so. And now we can see through this whole section. So, once you've got them that way, you could stick this one in because this is going to go on the back. But I think I'm going to do a little bit of inking and stuff with that yet. So I'm going to leave that there, but you can see how that's going to work. And already it's starting to give us a really great effect. But I am going to stick all the mats and layers down on the front. So I'm going to start building that up with my stamped images. So I'm going to stick one of these either side like so. And then like I said, all of these on these pieces here. Now you can just flatten this back down. And what I like to do it's just with some glue, a little line of glue like so, do like a bunch at a time. And then it's really quick to just stick them down. This is because I'm covering every one. I just want to do it like so. That's if you want to cover every one. If you want to do every other, then you can. Some people just like to do the fronts and not even do the sides, so it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna go and stick all of this down. Okay, so I've stuck everything down and I've also added this very thin frame and you can do that with the mat and the layer dies. So I just pop them together like so, if I flip it over. Pop a, pop a bit of washi tape just to keep them so that you have a perfect frame and run it through your dye machine in your chosen colour and it will give you that very thin frame but it, I just think it works quite nice. So I've just done it in the same blue that I've got for the back for my mat and layer. And then I have all of my 
elements here. So I've I've used a mix of really of, of all my kind of underwater themed stamps and dies. So I've used for the sentiment I've got birthday fishes, which is that one there. And that's from the Paper Discovery Underwater World. Then I've used for the, I always love this one, the little treasure chest. And I've got all the glitter on the top there. And that is from the Hunky Dory for the Love of Stamps Under the Sea. I will link if I can find these. Some of them are older, but some places do still stock them. And for the, the kind of treasure look, I use this Cosmic Shimmer and it's the Blush Haze. And it's gorgeous. Look at that. It's just got so much shine. And then for the fish and the starfish and the crab, I've used this one, which is Paper Discovery Underwater World. So they kind of work together. This is Paper Discovery and I used this one. I've used the for the shell. Oh, it was that one there. And I've just die cut that in holographic card because that catches the light nicely. And then for all of like these pieces of seaweed and stuff, I've used this one here. So I've used these ones, which was the Paper Discovery Beyond the Sea. Yeah, it was for those, but also I used this one for these bits. I have them still in my dye machine and that creates all of these bits of seaweed as well. But like I said, I'll try and link as much as I can. And then I've created the seabed here, just using a piece of scrap card stock. I've just kind of inked the edges there to darken them up. And then I've used the, this is the gravel paper discovery embossing folder, but I thought it kind of looked like sand and stones and things like that on the bottom. So on this piece here, which is going to be the inside, I want to start building my scene. So I cut this using the same die, but just obviously just at the end of it. So I'm going to stick that one down the bottom there. And then I can start creating my scene. So, you know, got bits of the seaweed here. I think I'm going to have this one like so, and then maybe have the crab. So he kind of like covers the ends of the seaweed there. I'll pop him on some foam as well like so and then I think I'll have some more seaweed coming in from the top so I'm going to stick these um, down onto this piece first and then I'm probably going to have some decorated on the actual front on the outside of the card I know the whole point is like everything's meant to be inside the tank but it's quite nice especially in a card form to have things and it just makes it a little bit more tactile and maybe we'll have this one here just so they're kind of creeping into the the scene there something like that and then if you start to like lay things down so if I just put this then you can kind of lay it all in there just to kind of get an idea now the fish are going to be attached with acetate so that they move so you want to kind of place where you want them now the acetate needs to sit it's going to be the same width of this and we'll cut that before we stick the two together but you do want to do this decoration first but if you place them so if I'm going to have my seahorse here my acetate is going to come out from this one so he will float and then I think the fish would sit nicely on that one so he can be up there and they actually have the room to move within the card. So I'm going to have a piece of acetate there and a piece of acetate there. So I really like that scene there and then I think I'm also going to bring in the shell just behind him. Then when you stick this on the top you want to make sure that the same bottom is the same as the back one there because they do have a slightly different top to the bottom. So just make sure you'll know anyway, because it will all sit perfectly. But you can see now what we've got. And then I'm thinking about having a little cluster on the front here. Take the end off of that one. Because I like to get everything placed, because then I know if I need to cut any more. So I'm going to do this on this side, because I've got everything in there on the left, so I'm going to have this on the right. And then we've got a few more bits and pieces so again I'll build them up and then I think I'm going to have the treasure like so with maybe the sea um, the starfish just next to it so I, I kind I like that placement and then my sentiment I'm going to stick using some foam on the very top there so you can see everything going on um, and I think it looks really good. So I think before, once I've stuck this down, before I put that on top, I'm gonna to use the glossy accents to just um, add in some bubbles, which I like to do when I do any of these kind of cards. So I'm gonna start sticking it all down. I'll come back when we do this and then we can add the top and the acetate. Okay, so everything is now stuck down apart from my fish here. So you can see there if I just bring it up. I also put this on some foam so I could tuck bits of the seaweed in behind. It just creates some shadow. And then again, if I just bring up the front there, that little cluster, I think it looks really cool. So I've cut a strip of acetate. Obviously your acetate is going to vary depending on, um, you know, what you've got attached to it. So 
whatever the width is though you need to the width though you do need to make sure it's obviously going to fit within the sections here so I need to remember which one I said yes yeah. so I can see there that that's going to fit perfectly so I'm just kind of hovering it just kind of sit it on top of that section there and then you should be able to rest whatever it is that you're going to have floating so you can see that's rest and now when we move the side of the card it's going to move now you want to make sure that when you fold it flat it's still going to sit within that section if you go too long obviously it's going to hit this when that comes down and it's just going to hit this side and it won't fold flat but that actually is a perfect so I'm just going to it's a perfect length so I'm just going to snip that off there and I can grab some of my red tape and I'm just going to pop it on to so again I can see yeah it's going to sit there so I'm going to pop my tape on that area there but hopefully by showing you how to do it you, you can easily then adapt this you know for your card and then I'm going to do it on the other side as well always use a red tape when you use acetate because um, it will stick really well so I'm just going to take the backing off of one side and then again it was that one there and then just stick that within there so I've then got my backing on the top side here to peel off in a minute then for that bit there I'm just going to pop just a small strip of the red tape just on the end and that will be plenty for you to attach your element there okay so I'm just going to grab that other piece and I'm going to do the same with the fish now this fish is a bit longer so again I need to make sure that whatever he's attached to when he folds flat yeah he's going to sit within that section so again trim that off and I'm just going to do the same again so now I'm just going to attach the seahorse and the fish Okay, so now again, before you stick everything together, just place it over the top, just so you can, you know, make sure you're happy. I might move my sentiment, which I still can, just because he's kind of just in the view there of that fish. But look how cool that looks. I think it looks wonderful. I'm so pleased with it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have my sentiment. I don't know. Need to play around. Maybe I might have it like here or something on an angle. Okay, so I'm going to take the backing off of there and then you want to add your glue. I'm using the Kalau because this is just going to strengthen this so much. And just pop the glue across all of this area. Obviously I don't need to worry about that bit because I've already got the double sided tape. See the glue coming out there, there we go. And this glue gives me a little bit of time as well, so because you need to do both sides at the same time. Some of your, you know, your white glues might dry quite quick. Start from the bottom because you want to make sure it's going to stand up straight and obviously once it attaches to that little bit of red tape that's in there that's going to obviously stop you being able to wiggle it around so I'm just going to make sure that's okay and then I can just really push down on those bits there and if you actually fold the card flat you'll be able to really push in on the red tape on those two there. You can still wiggle a little bit around the top and the bottom there. Just make sure all of these bits that you just pinch together just to make sure that glue's secure. I'm just going to keep it flat just whilst I push down on all of those. Okay, so I finished the card. So I've ended up cutting the sentiment into two. So I just like that little arrangement there. And then I've also added this starfish, which is from the same stamp set, just to kind of balance out everything. It needed something on this side and I quite liked having this outside and I popped on a little bit of foam. But now you can see how cool does that look? I absolutely love this. I think it looks brilliant. I haven't put the glossy accents because when I was doing it, I realized that they are actually obviously quite far away from the back there. So I've just left them out. But if you wanted to, and I've, I will share my kind of under C playlist and you'll see I use that a lot if you did want to use it. And then on the back, I've added my matte and layer there as well. So that's ready for me to write my message. And then the whole thing will just fold flat and that will fit into a five by seven envelope. Or you might find one of my box envelopes will be better because there is a bit of dimension and there is a bit of bounce to these cards as well when you double them up. And I'll link the envelope boxes there. 
Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. For those of you that have the dies, I hope it's given you more inspiration on other ways to use them. And I can't wait to see your versions. And what I'll also do is I'll link up some other cards that are similar kind of underwater themes that you might enjoy. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. If you did enjoy today's tutorial, just click on my face there and hit the notification bell. And then you'll be notified when I next upload a video. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.